guys welcome back again to my youtube channel my name is abiola and if this is your first time here you are welcome if you are a returning subscriber you are absolutely welcome in our last video we we're able to draft this princess that bustia and we we're able to cut everything on fabric we we're able to also cut out the skirt part in today's video we'll be joining every piece together so let's go straight into the video of today here are the parts of the front part of the princess that bust here the first thing we are going to do is to notch our under bust and our bust point because i did not notch it after cutting out so i'll go ahead now and notch that point which is the under bust and i'll also notch the bust point this is very important the next step is to go ahead and cut out the pad we're going to use to pad this bust here and i'm going to use my pattern as a guide from the bust point go up by two inches and connect that to form a straight line now slash with your scissors from that point and also cut out your under bust area okay and this is what we're going to use to cut out the part for the center front for the side from the middle area i'm going to mark three inches round three inches three inches three inches i'll go ahead with my scissors and cut that out the first time we're cutting it on fold because it's the center front i'll go ahead and trace it just the way you see me doing the second one we're not cutting it on fold but we're cutting out two pieces so i'm going to go ahead and cut the two of them one for the first side one for the other side now go back to your ironing table place this the way they should be you understand that's why we notched the under bust initially so that you know how to place your pad okay so i'll place that properly and i'll go ahead to iron that so that it stays put i'll go ahead now to place them side by side and adjust it so that they become equal okay so if you're not using a steam iron you have to flip it to the back and iron it well if not it's not going to stay put okay now i'm going to go ahead to join the pieces together the first thing i'm going to do is to mark half inch seam allowance because that's the allowance i'll be using it to join them together on my sewing machine i'll go ahead now and do the same thing for my lining piece okay i'll do the same thing for my lining piece then for the back piece as you can see i'm going to join these two together using 0.5 seam allowance here too 0.5 then for the main fabric i'm going to do the same thing join them using 0.5 inch seam allowance but we're not joining the middle just the side okay so here is the front part when i was done joining this is a very important step that we're about to go into which is the ironing of the bustier so that it comes out round and you know it fits the boob properly i'll go ahead and open the seams and iron it using my taylor's ham i have seen a lot of videos on youtube on how to make your own taylor's ham if you would like me to recommend one for you you can let me know in the comment section and if you want me to also make a video myself showing you how to make a taylor's ham you can also let me know go ahead and open the seams iron it properly iron 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 do the same thing for the lining piece do the same thing for the back bodies okay iron everything okay so when you are done you trim out the excess allowance to be honest i only trimmed the excess allowance for the front part and i notched only the front part every other one i just made sure i ironed the seams open very well you can go ahead and trim them as well but i did not this is the part you all have been waiting for bring out your artistic skills okay on the shoulder line i'm going to go in by one inch okay on the other area i'll go in by one inch as well then i'm going to take the midpoint of this other shoulder which is 2.5 and i'll come down from that midpoint to 6.5 inches and this is how we're going to make our magic happen i'll connect from that shoulder to this point okay after which guys this is this is at your discretion if you want to create a neckline different from this one this is just how to go about it i'm going to keep looking at the picture and i'll try to trace out what i can see on the picture can you see what i'm doing just try to you know create that little curve look at the picture again just you know try to create 
the magic i'll go ahead and trace it out but i'm not tracing directly on the line because i feel like i'll still have to trace out trim out to achieve what i want okay so when i'm done doing this i'll go ahead and pin it to the lining i went ahead to pin it down to the lining piece and when i was done i took that to my mirror to check if the neckline if i got it correctly and i kept looking at the picture as well i realized that i need to trim a little bit more okay and that so i removed the pins and i you know trimmed more I went in deeper and I cut that out. At the other end, I also went ahead to trim it a little more. The way you are seeing me doing, I trimmed it a bit more. So guys, to achieve the exact one on the thumbnail, you know you have to go deeper at the other end. I'm referring to the U area. You have to go deeper to achieve the exact one on the thumbnail. Now go ahead and pin everything to the lining. Make sure it's relaxed and stitch using 0.25 seam allowance. So um, here's what I have when I was done. I went ahead to trim out the excess allowance on the lining and here's what i have guys do not be scared if one part of the shoulder is longer than the lining you're going to trim it out and it still came out nice okay i went ahead to trim out the excess fabric there and yeah i will now go in with my hemming gum in order to give the neckline a good finishing you can also top stitch but this was a very good method that came out very very nice for me okay so the next step is to go ahead and flip it over so as to stitch the sides using 0.5 seam allowance stitch the sides the way you see me showing you and for the back as well you place them um, right sides facing each other and if you remember we took some inches from the neckline in front we're going to mark the same thing at the back so that the shoulder at the back is not um, bigger than that in front so i'll connect the way you see me doing i took in one more inch inwards and i connected then i'm going to cut that out with my scissors but i will not cut directly on the line i will leave about 0.5 inch seam allowance so by the time we are done turning the lining and the fabric it's going to go to that exact point that we want it to be after using 0.5 inch seam allowance i hope that makes a lot of sense abby for the back piece you go ahead and stitch the neckline the zip allowance area and the side seam okay so here's what i have when i was done for the front i flipped it over for the back i flipped it over as well make sure you trim you know towards the zipper allowance area especially at the top so that you can get your pointed edge trim cut off the excess allowance there because that's the only thing that can prevent you from getting a pointed edge at that area okay all right as you can see i trimmed off my own excess so that the neckline can lay flat after using my hemming gum and so that it can just be pointed because we need that place to be pointed okay you can also go in with any sharp objects to ensure that you poke it out so that it becomes pointed but be careful not to um open up the stitch at that point so when i'm done with that i will go ahead to my ironing table to attach the hemming gum at the neckline just like i did in front and i'll just go ahead to iron that you have to make sure everything relaxes before you iron especially when you're using your hemming gum if you were top stitching that will be a different case okay now let's work on the skirt part for the skirt part, I'm going to place the main fabric and the lining piece right sides facing each other and I'm going to stitch the end using 0.5 inch seam allowance. I'll be doing the same thing for the back piece as well. I'll place them right sides facing each other and I'm going to go ahead and stitch the ends using 0.5 inch seam allowance. Okay? here is what i have when i was done okay i just want to show you the technique i use in turning my lining i'll flip it over like you see me doing like this and i'm going to go ahead to try to make them equal once you bake them equal you will notice that the lining adds about 0.5 inch from the main fabric okay you know we reduce our lining by 0.5 so this is normal i'll go ahead and iron everything and make sure that i iron that part well so that it forms a crease okay so that when i flip it over and go back to my sewing machine that crease is going to help me sew it right okay so now i'll go back to i'll flip it over and try to get that crease back 
can you see this is me trying to get the crease back after i'm able to get the crease you can use your paint to stitch it down but i do not need to do that i'll go back to my sewing machine and stitch the sides using 0.5 inch seam allowance i will stitch the other the bump area using 0.5 inch seam allowance and i'll stitch the other side using 0.5 inch i'm going to quickly repeat my explanation using the front part guys i was done stitching i flipped it over like i told you guys and tried to make it equal and as you can see at the end 0.5 inch is already at the end i'm going to iron well so as to form a crease after ironing i'll flip it back over okay then i will try to mark that crease very well so that when i go back to my sewing machine to stitch it down it's going to be there then i'll stitch the sides using 0.5 inch seam allowance like you see me showing you here is what i have when i was done i'll go ahead and trim the edges just the corner edges so that by the time i flip it over it comes out pointed the way it should be the next step is to go ahead and mark the dart i like to mark my dart when i'm done with the upper part because sometimes you mark your dart you want to join the two of them up and down you realize that the dart is no longer matching so I, I try to be sure of what i'm doing before i mark my dart and to god be the glory the dart of four inches is what i took that means my nipple to nipple is eight guys so that is just what i took and everything did match with my normal nipple to nipple a little trick to ensure your back that aligns what i do is i measure what i have they already sewn that at the upper part i have four inches i will add 0.5 inch to that and i'm going to take a dart of 4.5 on the skirt part and it's going to align perfectly after taking in my dart i'll go ahead and join the upper and the lower part of the dress together and i'm going to go ahead to pin them down okay the same thing for the back before i attach my zipper i'll pin them down and i'll go to my sewing machine and sew them up and here is what i have for the back i will put them right sides facing each other and mark my one inch zipper allowance and from the end my slit is going to be 12 inches long so i marked that my slit and i continued marking my one inch zipper allowance from beginning to the end and i tried to pin it down and i ensured that that back aligns as well the two angles there align now when i finish fixing my zip i'll be seeing something else do you get so guys it's time to stitch our slits i'm marking out the part i'm going to be stitching on my sewing machine yeah so i'll stitch the sides and i'll stitch that upper part and yeah that already forms our slit you make sure you stitch this in the way that it's neat okay so after doing that i will go ahead now to loosen the part where i'm going to fix my zipper i marked where my zipper will stop so i loosen to that place and i went to my sewing machine and i double stitch so that it doesn't loosen then i'll go ahead and attach my zipper so after attaching my zipper here is what i have then i placed the front and the back part of the rest right side facing each other and i took all my measurements divided by two i marked my bust my waist i marked my hip point my hip measurement and i marked everything that i needed to mark for me to go to my sewing machine and you know attach the front to the back i will also be attaching the shoulders using 0.5 inch seam allowance okay so now let's cut our sleeve i'll be cutting the left and the right hand sleeve together so i have two pieces of fabric folded into two first things first i will go ahead and measure around my armhole okay you can measure the two of them to be sure and i got 21 inches when i measured my armhole so that's what i'm going to be using to draft my sleeve okay i cut out that upper part and i went ahead to measure my elbow circumference and my wrist circumference my elbow is 12 my wrist is 10 inches the next thing mark 0.5 inch allowance on the top of the sleeve and connect as seen then i marked my shoulder to elbow which is 13 inches okay 13 inches and i connected that and that is my elbow line then the length of the sleeve is 24.5 inches then i added half inch seam allowance 24 then 24.5 and i connected that next step is to calculate my cap height my cap height is calculated by dividing my bust by 10 plus 1.2 inches 38 divided by 10 plus 1.2 is 5 inches and that's what i went ahead to mark and i connected that now remember my round armhole is 21 21 divided by 2 is 10 10 minus 0 0.2 is 9.8 and i marked 9.8 there and i connected that with a straight line okay i divided 9.8 by 3 what i have there I divided it by 3 and i had approximately 3.3 at each point so i marked 3.3 at each point then at the edge 
which is the end i'm going to come out by 0 0.8 inches okay then at the first 3.3 point i'll come out by 0 0.8 inches as well and i'll connect that with my curved ruler okay after which i'm going to go and connect that to the midpoint as well which is this point i just pointed at after connecting that i'm going to divide the last point into two okay and after dividing that into two i'm going to go in by 0 0.2 inches the same way you see me doing and i'll connect the last point and that is our sleeve curve okay so i'm going to use the remaining fabric there as my allowance okay that's about 0 0.75 allowance on each side then on the elbow line i'm going to divide 12 by 2 which gives me 6 inches okay and i will mark 0 0.75 allowance and on the last part which is the sleeve length 10 divided by 2 is 5 and i'll mark that and add 0 0.75 same allowance i'll go ahead now and connect all the points together and i'll cut them out one last step i'm going to go ahead now and go in from that point by 0 0.4 inches just to trim out for the front armhole because you know the front and the back are not same then i'm going to connect from the top the same way you see me doing like this then i'll trim that part out for the front only i almost made the mistake of trimming both the front and the back but that is not what you're supposed to do so so i went ahead to trim off just the front curve alone and i opened that up so i went ahead to label the front and the right side for both the left and the right sleeve and the same thing i cut i went to cut it on the lining piece as well you can decide to reduce your lining piece by half an inch just like we did for the main body of the dress but for me i did not reduce it though i did the same step as i did for my normal um body of the fabric but when i was done i trimmed the excess at the top that was just what i did okay after which i flipped it over and i ironed it and here is what i have yeah after flipping and ironing so guys i attached my sleeve and here is the outcome of the dress guys i really loved the outcome of this dress and i would love to try out more necklines in the future more sophisticated and more classy necklines and guys we've come to the end of this video if you have not subscribed and you've gotten to this point please endeavor to subscribe hit the like button leave me comments below i love to read from you and i will see you in my next video guys bye